Are you tired of trying to add LEDs to your Halloween scares only to be completely confused with terms like resistor, current, forward voltage, voltage drop? What the heck does it all mean? I've tried electroshock therapy and recreational drugs, but I can't wrap my head around it. I'm at my wit's end. Have no fear, distressed hunter. Dan from Creepy Creations is here. Sweet niblets! So the first thing we're going to look at is what we're trying to light up, the LED. Now LED actually stands for light emitting diode. Well, I understand the light emitting part, but what the heck is a diode? Great question! This is a diode, along with its symbol as represented in an electronic or schematic diagram. A diode is an electronic component that allows current to only flow in one direction. In the case of a light emitting diode, it works exactly the same way, except that it gives off light when current passes through it. We don't really care that it only passes current in one direction, but we do have to be aware of it, so we don't wire it up backwards, otherwise it won't light up. Got it? Absolutely! Great! So, now that we know a diode has a positive and a negative end, we have to figure out which one is which on the LED. Every LED has two leads. You can see this one, it has a long and a short one. If it is a different length, the long one is always the positive lead. <coughs> Now, if for some reason they are both the same lengths, another thing to check is the actual body of the LED. It'll have one side that's slightly flat. That's the negative side. So you can almost always tell which is the positive and which is the negative side of the diode. That's important. Okay, so now we know which is the positive and which is the negative end. Now things get a little tricky. We get to that first nasty word we were learning about, voltage drop. It's also known as forward voltage, and every diode has one. I'll try to explain it as simply as I can. In any circuit, a diode will use up so much voltage. In the case of one of these LEDs, it's about 2.2 volts. It doesn't matter how many volts you put across it, it'll only use up 2.2 volts. So now you're probably wondering, where does the rest of the voltage go? That's where our funky calculations come in. Let's assume you hook up a battery pack directly to an LED, like in this diagram. If we assume the LED uses 2.2 volts and the battery pack produces 9 volts, that leaves us 6.8 volts left over that we have to do something with. Otherwise, that 6.8 volts is going to try and ram itself through the LED and, well, that's what happens. Ouch! In order to prevent our LED from meeting such a grisly end, we need to limit how much current flows through it, because the LED basically isn't smart enough to limit itself. It'll take as much current as you can give it. So now we have to introduce an additional component, known as a resistor. Huh? A resistor is an electronic component that basically allows us to limit how much current is flowing through the circuit at any given time. But the current that's flowing is also based on the voltages present, so now we have to get into some math. Remember, our LED has a forward voltage drop of 2.2 volts. And we'll assume we're using a 9 volt battery, so our source voltage is 9. So that leaves us that 6.8 volts that we have to do something with. But there's one other rating that that LED comes with that's critical to figuring out what we need to do here. And that's how much current it can use. These large LEDs typically use 20 milliamps to give the brightest light without risking burning them out. Since an amp is a measurement of current, 20 milliamps is 20 one thousandths or two one hundredths of an amp. Let's remember that. Now, if we have 20 milliamps flowing through the circuit everywhere all the time, that means we must have 20 milliamps going through our resistor. Now we're getting somewhere, because what are we going to do with that 6.8 volts? we're going to let it drop across the resistor. So how do we know what value of resistor to use? As it turns out, it's actually pretty simple. A resistor is measured in ohms, but what the heck is an ohm? Actually, it turns out an ohm is voltage divided by current. And guess what? We know both of those, so we can figure out what value of resistor to get. Since the voltage we want to drop across the resistor is 6.8 volts, and the current we want running through the resistor is 0.02 amps, 
we simply divide 6.8 by 0 0.02 and we get 340. Well, I'll go ahead and order one of those 340 ohm resistors. What? They don't make 340 ohm resistors? Oh, son of a- Hey, it's okay. They couldn't possibly make a resistor with every single value on the planet. That'd be millions of them, and it's rather impractical. So instead, we have to pick the closest practical value of resistor. Since they don't make a 340, we've got two options, either a 330 or a 390. So which is your best option? 390, here's why. If you went with a 330 ohm resistor, the amount of current we're letting through is actually a little higher than what the diode's rated for, and we might burn it out. 390 drops the current down to about 17 milliamps instead of 20. But you know what, that's still plenty, and particularly in a Halloween scare, it's gonna be plenty bright enough. Better safe than sorry. So now it's time to put all that theory into practice. I've got my 390 ohm resistor, my LED, and got a little breadboard with my 9 volt battery already hooked up. So we're going to take our 390 ohm resistor, jam it in there, usually put it on the plus side. Now I'm going to take my LED, remember our long one is the plus, so put that on the positive side. And we have liftoff. Lights up exactly as we expected. Nice and bright without being too bright. And it's not getting hot, so we're obviously not pumping too much current through it, so we're not going to overheat it or burn it out. One last thing you should know about resistors. How do you tell one from the other if you dump a whole bunch into a box? They're actually all color-coded in a very easy-to-read way once you understand the code. Every resistor will have a minimum of three colored bars on it, or bands. So all you have to do is read the three colors, and you can tell what value of resistor it is. The first two bands represent the first two digits in the resistance value, and it's coded according to this colored chart, with black representing zero, brown one, red two, so on, up through white, which is nine. The third band tells us the multiplier, or how many zeros to put after the number we've just come up with. For practice, let's take a look at the resistor we actually used. The first band is orange, that's a three. The second band is white, that's a nine. So we start with a 39. The third band is brown, that's one, which means we put one zero after the end. So we have three, nine, and zero, or 390 ohms. Hey, that's what we wanted. And if you're curious, that fourth band is tolerance. That's basically how accurately the resistor has been made to its actual value. In the case of a gold band, that's 5%. That's pretty darn good. And if you want to wire up more than one LED, just hook two of them up in series, with the negative lead from one going straight into the positive lead of the other. Then just add the two voltages together before doing your calculation. There, you should be armed with enough information to help you calculate the resistor necessary to wire up as many LEDs as you want in series. It's a lot of information to cover off, so we'll do a quick recap in a little segment we like to call Recap Time. Recap Time! Let's review what we learned today. If you hook it up wrong, you're screwed and it'll blow up in your face. Remember, an LED only passes current in one direction, so you need to know which end is which. The long lead is positive. The current going through the circuit is the same, regardless of how many LEDs you use. Typically 20 milliamps, but check your manufacturing specs. And you have to add all the forward voltages together before calculating your resistor value. And don't forget, when doing the calculation, the LED current is usually given in milliamps, but the formula only works in amps. So take your LED current and divide by a thousand first. <laughs>